guys and welcome to today's video. I've been a little bit MIA because I am struggling a little bit with what I want to post on this channel. For me it's very easy to be tempted to kind of just bang out some haul videos which isn't really what I want to do especially like brand new clove hauls. Um, it's really easy to go to a shop I really like let's say Zara buy loads of stuff and throw it onto this channel which to be honest is a really great way to grow your channel but it's just not what I do um currently ethically it doesn't really I'm trying to like shop a little bit less so it just doesn't sit well with me so I'm not sure what I want to be doing on this video on this channel which is why today I'm doing something a little bit different um trying to shop as little as possible and actually the only thing I've bought this entire year clothing wise is this jumper I'm like 95% sure that's true I'm pretty sure all I've bought this year is this jumper I bought this second hand on ebay it's an m&s cashmere jumper i really really love it um i'm just trying to reduce the kind of like my carbon footprint i guess so today i thought i would share with you something that i'm a little bit new to which is charity shop shopping and my tips and tricks on how to find great books at great prices but before we get started with that i just wanted to remind you that i've linked down below my instagram my twitter my blog my facebook page but we don't really use that that much if you guys are interested in following me especially my instagram that's probably where you'll see the most content from me including book content if any of you are interested in that i am a hundred percent not about to become a book youtuber they have like a special name a booktuber i don't know i just don't read enough but i just want to share something a little bit different today so i am going to be looking at my notebook by the way this is my notebook from papier 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 i love it i just think it's lovely it's personalized and i bought i ordered this quite recently i'll link to it down below i ordered it with a 15 pound off voucher if that's still available i'll link that down below because it made this ridiculously beautiful notebook like eight pounds or something with postage it was such a steal i absolutely love it and they have loads of other prints as well they're really good gifts i have got my notes i'm gonna be looking down a little bit and at the end i will share with you my charity shop book haul so as i mentioned i'm quite new to charity shop shopping i started because i just think it's more ethical i also think it's a little bit more fun than going to a regular shop i kind of fell out of love with shopping i guess um in a regular shop like michael hates shopping with me but for some reason he likes coming to charity shops he doesn't really buy very much occasionally he'll buy like a board game or recently he bought like a ping pong set um but it's fun i really we both really enjoy it i kind of find it relaxing the same way i maybe would have found regular shopping relaxing and retail therapy like 10 years ago it's way cheaper than shopping at a normal shop and in my opinion it's more ethical when you're giving money to charity and all that sort of good stuff I, i've bought like a trench coat um for a charity shop and maybe like a jumper but not very much i really would like to explore the the fashion and the clothing side of it a little bit more this year but currently like books is where i feel very comfortable i think it's very easy to shop for books in a charity shop and it's a great kind of step into charity shop shopping there is a slight debate about whether shop it buying books second hands is ethical or not some sort of author said not that long ago that it's ineffic i just personally don't agree i have i did have a little bit of a think about it i kind of done a little bit of research to kind of see where i stand because i think it's important like i'm saying like shop at a, at a charity shop because i think it's ethical and then someone's like hey maybe it's not ethical and um, i personally think it's pretty ethical i know that maybe writers aren't paid that much but i don't think that issue stands with the buyer I, th I think that issue is with like the publishers that's a whole other story i think like libraries and buying secondhand books are great not everyone can afford to buy brand new books and there will still be people buying brand new books myself included because as i'll talk about in the video in a minute you can't really find newer releases in charity shops but i'm going to link to a really really good video by spinsters books she's got a whole video about whether it's ethical or not it's really interesting and um definitely worth looking at if that's something you're interested in my first tip kind of goes across charity shop shopping full stop not just for buying books but i would look for somewhere that has quite a few stores in my opinion you're looking for about five that are together i said that to someone recently and they were like wow like where do you find that most towns have about five in my opinion i live in north london and i know that like notting hill probably has about five Oh, I don't want to be wrong. I don't know Notting Hill that well, but I know um, Notting Hill has quite a few. For example, Holloway has quite a few. Crouch End has quite a few. I don't really know the rest of London because I don't really go there very much. Look for somewhere that has quite a few and 
kind of locate them all and just have them kind of in your mind because I really think that it's kind of worth doing it like a an hour of charity shop shopping rather than popping in to one today one tomorrow I just go for all of them in like an hour or so but of course if you're just passing one and there's not another four next to it of course pop in but I just feel like it's easier if there's loads together especially because to be honest you're unlikely to find many books that you'll want to buy in one charity shop typically I only find one in each charity shop if that sometimes i'll go to like two or three charity shops and still just leave with one book obviously it depends on how picky you are but just bear that in mind then i personally like to have a rough idea of what i want i have a list of books that i like i have a list of like authors i kind of want i'm probably not gonna find it but i kind of i have a rough idea of what i'm interested in finding and i think that's a good idea if you don't want to feel too overwhelmed but if you do happen to find a book you like i would buy it there and then because you're unlikely to find it again anytime soon. There are some books that are in every single charity shop. For example, I can't remember what it's called, Eleanor Elephant is completely fine, I think that's what it's called. Um, last time I went charity shop shopping, I saw two copies, which is very rare. Stuff like Zadie Smith, White Teeth, which was once a really, really good top seller, really easy to find. There are definitely books which once upon a time were super duper duper popular, everyone read them, everyone bought them. It's way easier to find bestsellers than other books, but not necessarily current bestsellers, but like old bestsellers because everyone bought a copy. Next, be prepared to ha to rummage. I remember when I was initially trying to shop shopping for books, I was just kind of like looking very vaguely. Now I literally like go through every single 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 book. You can do that pretty quickly, even if there's a whole bookshelf, you can whiz through that in a couple of minutes. Um, and I really think it's worth doing that. Books are often issued in, in different covers, so you'll really want to see what the name is. Sometimes I don't even recognise recognize the cover. I need to like see the name, see the author. So just kind of like whizzing through it quickly, but seeing the actual covers, I just personally find works much better for me. But it's also worth noting that not all charity shops are that organised. Some are. If you're going, for example, to an Oxfam Books, they have very clear sections. You'll have a fiction section, a crime section, a cookbook section, a history section, a photography section, a craft section, a kids section. Like everything's very, very, very clear. And they're typically all in alphabetical order. However, if you're going to any local charity shops that just has a couple of bookshelves, they're not gonna be in any order. They might be in alphabetical order, but often they're not. Typically they'll have like big books to one side, small books to the other side, and that's how organized those places get. But it is worth going in and kind of like having a kind of scanning through, working out where you want to go. I personally at the moment just go through fiction. I don't go through anything else. Um, well, I might have a quick browse over everything else, but I don't don't really finger through every other section, especially in somewhere like Oxfam Books, because it's an entire bookshop. Like I would be there a really, really long time. Just also note that somewhere like Oxfam Books is really, really well organized but you're also gonna pay double, triple, quadruple the price that you would pay in another charity shop. I mean, it doesn't really matter that much in my opinion because at the end of the day, the money goes to charity, but typically I would still probably rather pay the pound that is also going to charity than the four pounds in an Oxfam books because I'm probably gonna be buying books in Oxfam books anyway because it's unlikely that I will find that exact book somewhere else. But just know that typically, especially if you're on a budget, the bigger charity shop chains, they're a little bit more expensive than locals typically, but you'll get to know your charity shop. You'll know which ones are cheaper, which ones are more expensive, which ones are more likely to have something that you will like. Um, I walked into one charity shop yesterday. Because I kind of just knew that this charity shop never has anything that I'm interested in, whether it comes to fashion or books but i walked in anyway because i thought why not i just know from now on it's very very unlikely it's still worth having a look but um you'll definitely find like a charity shop that you find is good for you you'll get to know like which one has more fiction which one doesn't which one is cheaper all that sort of stuff now when i'm when i'm in the actual charity shop i like scan through and then if there's something that i am kind of half tempted by what i do is i use the goodread app i will link my goodreads down below and then i hit the little scan button for example, if I saw this and I thought, oh, like this cover looks familiar. What I then do is I just scan in the barcode like so and it comes up. It says um, it's a 3.8 rating. So I would kind of be a bit unsure as to whether I wanted it or not. I think you can also scan the cover. 
yeah, you can also scan the cover, so it's up to you. Sometimes charity shops will have stickers on the front or covering the barcode, so you can scan the cover or the barcode. It's totally up to you. And then I click on it, and what I personally do, but it's totally up to you, is I go and see what my friends thought of the book. Um, I check the rating as well. If it's above a 3.5 rating, if it's under that, I probably just wouldn't bother. Um, and then I just check like what my friends rated it. As long as most of my friends or friends I think have similar reading taste to me rated it a 4 out of 5 or a 5 out of 5, I will probably buy it. I mean, if some of them rated it really low, but some of them rated it high, I might still buy it anyway. But yeah, I just I personally really like using good reads in the trash shop or you can also use amazon there's no reason why you couldn't do that i just have goodreads and i you have also got the scan feature on amazon i just prefer goodreads because i can compare it to my friends reviews very very unlikely to find a book that is new or that's just like newly released not like brand new you do actually find brand new books because clearly people are given books as gifts and this and straight, straight to the charity shop for example i really want to read such a fun age that's like all over instagram at the moment don't know when it was released but i'm pretty sure it was released really recently i know it's very very unlikely i'm going to find it charity shop anytime soon maybe in like a couple of months but at the moment i just don't think that's going to happen but it's one i'm going to keep an eye out for i might buy it brand new soon if i run out of other books to read but just bear that in mind something else which uh, i can't, might help i'm not sure is that some charity shops have instagram pages or facebook pages i personally haven't really found this helped me too much i once bought a book that i saw on an instagram page and to be honest i regretted buying that book now because i just think i was just tempted by the Instagram post I was like oh I've seen that book before and it was like it was like the first book I ever bought from a charity shop it's worth having a look something I would highly 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 recommend you do is you look in the window of the shop that's usually where they put their best books their best stuff generally I guess and you can ask someone to get it from the window especially somewhere like Oxfam books they usually have loads and loads of books in the windows definitely worth looking there and then when you're done if you didn't like a book and you don't want to keep it send it back to the charity shop um, and then someone else can buy it and hopefully enjoy it i think that's all my tips i feel like i had one more but i forgot it's really quite good for stuff like cookbooks i think people buy cookbooks and then get fed up with them and give them to charity shop even stuff like jamie's cookbooks i think can be quite easily found in charity shop don't forget to take your own bag because charity shops usually don't have bags and obviously we're out here trying to reduce our plastic waste one other thing is you want to go regularly but not too regularly in my opinion every two weeks ish is a good amount of time because they get new stock i mean not that much just i just think every two weeks is a good amount of time sometimes they have like these twisty book things which are, are not my favorite if i'm honest because you can't really like look behind but just bear in mind that sometimes they'll have like bookshelves and then somewhere else in the charity shop they'll have this like twisty book thing which is worth looking in well, these are the books i've bought in a charity shop and i thought i'd quickly talk you through them five i bought recently and i featured on my instagram which is why i decided to make this video and then i think the other three i bought at another time i'll start with the first one i ever bought and i regret buying oh i bought one more let me grab the other one so i'm gonna start with the first one i ever bought and i regret buying and that's called being an Adult by Lucy Tobin and Kat Paul. It might be a good book, but I don't really read as much non-fiction as I used to. I have got a couple of other non-fictions, but I just don't read them as much as I used to. Aesthetically, it's beautiful. It's also on their Instagram. I was tempted by it. I went in and I bought it. I think I paid a lot of money for this as far as like charity shops go. Charity shops really aren't as expensive, as cheap as you're gonna, as you think they are. Especially like some charity shops. And yes, money is going to charity, but just bear that in mind because you're, if you're buying loads and loads from a charity shop, it, it still adds up. This was way more than I would pay for now in a charity shop. It was from Oxfam Books. It's just like a practical book about how to be an adult. It might be entertaining. I probably will sit down and have a little whiz through it. I'm sure I'll learn a couple of things from it. It's got stuff about like first aid, exercise, doing a washing, that sort of stuff. Probably not one I'd buy now, but I bought it and it's in the haul. This one again was from Oxfam Books. This is the second book I ever bought. I haven't read it yet. I probably will if I'm honest. It's got really good reviews online. It's quite an expensive book online. It's £17 at a bookshop, but even on Amazon, I don't think it's very cheap. And I mean, even Amazon comes with its own ethical issues. And that's where most of us buy our books, let's be honest. This is called The Lost Property of Love. 
this was five pounds which i think is quite a lot again for a charity shop book especially because i wasn't like looking for this book if i were looking for it and it was five pounds i'd probably be really excited but it wasn't but it's got really good reviews i am looking forward to reading it it's in excellent excellent condition i think it came out last year i think when i bought this it must have just come out um so i guess five pounds but the just came out isn't too bad i think it's little short stories about things people have lost i think i'm not sure let me know if you've read this and what you thought then there's another two which i bought i don't have the price of one of them but i picked up sally rooney conversations with friends i picked this up because i had read sally rooney's normal people i love sally rooney's normal people apparently it's going to be a bbc adaptation which i am so excited about apparently it comes out in spring i didn't love this book but that's obviously not the charity shop's fault uh oh no it was a good book but i loved normal people and this was just okay i think i probably paid about two pounds for this one then there is eleanor and park Rain by Rainbow Rowell. Ro Roll? Ro Rowell? Honestly, I don't know too much about this book, but I had seen the cover around. So I picked this one up. I paid £2. The price on the back is £8. Haven't read it, so I don't know too much about it. I think it's like a love story. Definitely going to give this a read. I may have bought this full price off Amazon, but I'm unsure. It wouldn't have been top top on my list. Then one I'm 90% sure I wouldn't have like gone out of my way to order off Amazon is The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas. A great thing about shopping in a charity shop is that the book is there, it's instant. It's like, do I wanna take this home now? And it's also, it's really affordable. So it's books that I probably wouldn't bother paying seven or eight pounds for, for example. But two pounds just seems so much more reasonable. I bought this, when did I buy this? I think I bought this on Monday. Yeah, I bought this Monday. I read it Tuesday and I'm filming this video on Wednesday. This is actually like a kid's book. I actually think two pounds for this book is also a bit expensive, which I know some of you are gonna be like, come on Sabrina, but this book is in a really, really quite a poor state. Um, and it's a kid's book or like a young adult book. This was a good book, I gave this a four out of five. It was a good book. I, I left it feeling sad, but it wasn't as well written as John Boyne's other book, which is The Hearts Invisible Furies, which by the way, I did not buy in a charity shop. But because I had read his previous book, that's why I also picked up this up. There is that. And then the next four I have not read. I'm currently reading Daisy Jones and the Six. This I paid £2.50 for, which I actually think is quite a good price for hardback. It's quite a big book. On my list, I actually had some other Taylor Jenkins reads book, but I didn't find those. So I thought, yeah, this will do. And I'm really looking forward to reading this. I have started. The, my, when I posted this on my Instagram, my DMs went wild. Everyone was raving about this book. Um, I'm not overly keen on the way it's written just because it's kind of like interviewee and it's quite a long book to read like that in my opinion. I've never read a book like that. I, I feel like I should have mentioned this at the beginning. I'm still kind of new to reading really which is why I think charity shop a charity shops work for me because there's so many books I have never read. We have Call Me By Your Name by Andre Aceman. Aceman? I don't know. I had two of his books on my to read list. I almost didn't pick this up because I really do want to read this, but I just kind of felt like I wasn't sure if I was in the mood to read this. But I now feel like I am in the mood to read this now that I have it. I'm going to read this, I think, next week. I paid 99p for this, which was such a good deal. The price on the back is £9. Decent condition. I mean, it's definitely been used, but it's not bad at all then we have bryony which by the way is a name i really really struggle to say bryony gordon mad girl i have seen this around i've listened to loads of podcasts with her i'm just quite interested in this book and it was only a pound so i picked it up i thought why not um i'll give this a read if i don't like it i'll just send it straight back to the charity shop and then i've only lost that on a pound and i I might have spent a pound and found a book I really, really love. Finally, I have Holly Bourne's How Do You Like Me Now. Seen this cover in loads of places. This was really, really popular a couple of years back. I think it came out about like a year and a half ago, two years ago. I was a bit oohing and ahhing about whether to pick this up because it wasn't actually on my to read list, but I'd just seen the cover everywhere. But then I searched on Goodreads, it had good reviews. I, again, really affordable i paid one pound fifty so i thought yeah why not let's just read this and i'll find out if i enjoy it if i don't again i'll send it straight back to the charity shop finally if charity shop shopping really isn't for you if you are not finding books then there are some alternatives amazon has a used section when you're buying books it's worth looking into that i personally don't find they're that much cheaper though i lied i got this off ebay i'm 95 percent sure i actually got this off ebay now that i think about it i got confused there 
this is off ebay that's another place you can get books um i think i probably paid like three pounds for this in store it's nine pounds so i thought that was a good deal then again it's a book that isn't going to landfill quite yet i'm probably gonna give it to charity shops who knows what happens then of course you can use your library that's something that i want to look into i i haven't done it yet just because i find that in libraries is also hard to find new books because everyone wants them all at the same time finally you can also use this website i'm gonna write the name here because i can't remember the top of my head people say that it is a little bit cheaper i personally still don't think it's anywhere near as cheap as going to charity shops but still worth having a look at so that's the end of today's video a little bit different let me know what you think i had no idea i could talk so much about buying books at a charity shop but i really hope it's it was helpful because i do know that it can be a little bit overwhelming because it is something new to most people at least it was to me but thank you so much for watching do let me know if you like this sort of type of video if you'd like to see more like this we'll probably be back with a favorite sometime this week fingers crossed and then i actually think i'm gonna vlog next week um like weekly like daily vlog weekly vlog i'm not sure because i'm actually away next week which i'm very excited about but um nowhere overly exciting i'm going to portugal which most of you know nowadays i go to at least twice a year so it's not overly exciting or new but i am still quite excited but again thank you so much for watching do like this video if you enjoyed it and i shall see you all very soon bye